Hey YouTube, this is part three of the series of installing the 700R4 automatic transmission. Part one was the prep work, removing the H pipe that was under the old transmission and moving the uh, under chassis battery uh, back three inches because it was in the way of the rear cross member. Part two was removing the TH350 transmission and now we're going to install the 700R4. I already had a buddy come over and we placed the 700R4 in position and we're ready to uh, continue the installation. All right, the transmission is in place. I have four bolts bolting it up to the engine. I don't have the torque converter screwed on yet, but I've got to get the uh, rear cross member Put in place so i just bolted it the two bolts i bolted it up and uh i have to drill new holes here because uh the transmission is three inches longer and i think this mounts about two inches further back so i've got to drill new mounting holes in the frame here i have to put some kind of spacer in here because of the frame bows in a little bit so I don't know. I'll figure some kind of spacer to put in there. And there's one on the other side as well. Get this rear cross member in and then I'll finish bolting, bolting it up and then I'll, I'll bolt the torque converter up. Make sure I've got the one eighth space. At first glance, it looks like a lot more than one eighth. So I have to figure that out too. So to drill these holes, I'm gonna take a little paintbrush, paint a little white paint on all four of those. So, and then I can take this cross member back out and and drill it. Because I can't get a drill in with the cross member here to get in the way of the drill motor. Okay, I've got the cross member installed. Got the new holes drilled and mounted on the frame on both sides. Now I'm gonna bolt the torque converter in and um, they want the spacing, let me see if I can get upside down here, between the flex plate and the torque converter to be 1 16th to 1 8th. Uh, actually, 3 16ths is okay too. So I'm using the uh, drill bit method. And Let's see if I can get it here on camera. The uh, 3 16 uh, 180 thousandths drill bit is the size. So it's 3 16 So I'm just gonna bolt it up at 3 16 They say uh, a little more is better. So 3 16 is 16 more than an eighth and uh, that should work. So I'll go ahead and get those three bolts in with no spacers right here. Got some brand new ARP torque converter bolts. Put a little uh, blue Loctite on those. I don't want those puppies coming loose. Torque converter bolted up, torqued 60 foot pounds. Put the dipstick on, put the cooling lines on. Goes in those two holes next. All right, got the coolant lines installed. Now I'm gonna put the dipstick in. Now the dipstick full mark needs to be a quarter inch above the seal here. So on my dipstick, that would make this low mark three eighths of an inch below, which is right about here at this lip. That's about three eighths of an inch. So I'm just like putting it in place approximately where it would go. And it looks like the low marks right at that lip. So, I mean, this dipstick's designed for this. I just felt like I wanted to double check that. So I'll go ahead and plug the dipstick in. It just, it just 
seals on these O-rings is just the pressure fit and the rubber grommet. All right, small correction. This grommet must be for a different style dipstick. This dipstick is designed to fit right in. Uh, and it's got the three O-rings on it. So uh, it, there's no way it would have worked with this. It just fit in nice and snug. So I guess it depends on what style dipstick you have. Now for the infamous TV cable hookup, which is this guy right here. And uh, you want this to move with the throttle. And at idle, you just want a slight bit of tension on that cable. And then at wide open throttle, you want it all the way. And I noticed this cable travels about one inch. So this on the Holly Sniper is supposed to be the hole for the TV cable. So I'm gonna hook it up to the bracket. I'll hook the throttle cable back up, but I'll hook it up to the bracket and uh, Make sure that it's got a little bit of tension at idle and wide open, it travels, the cable travels one inch. Otherwise, I understand you can burn the transmission up in just a few miles, it, because it burns out one of the clutch packs. Don't know why, but you wanna make sure you get that adjusted correctly. All right, TV cable installed. I've got, it's, it's a little, you know, tight at the beginning there's no slack in it at all and it comes out the one inch when the throttle is wide open so i don't know why it doesn't pull back all the way maybe that's not yeah that's Sure feels like it's got tension on it at idle. All right, we'll test drive it and see how it goes. All right, time to put the drive shaft in. I took it to a shop and they refurbished it, cut three inches off of it and balanced it for 150 bucks. And it looks brand new again. So I'll put a little grease, got some CRC grease and Put a little grease in these um, end caps and put this drive shaft back on. All right, I got the speedometer hooked back up. This is to my Intellitronics. Just goes in the place of the mechanical cable. It's got a wire going up to the dash. So now I have to hook up my uh, shift linkage. Getting close. All right, I've got the starter wired up. All three bolts holding it in. Got the shift linkage hooked up and adjust it. Ready to try this. I put eight quarts of uh, transmission fluid. I believe it takes 11, but it's past the full mark. I'll start it. Run it for 20 seconds and then check the fluid level and fill up the rest. All right, test startup and test drive. Starter sounds good. All right, I've taken it out a few times now, checked the uh, transmission fluid, topped it off a couple times. Very happy with the results here. Uh, very smooth shifting. Instead of tacking 3,000 RPMs at 60 miles an hour, I'm now tacking 2,200 RPMs with the fourth gear overdrive. It was one of the main goals. 